Hello everyone, my name is Raymond and I am a game developer and the creator of The Street King. Welcome to my second devlog video for my new game, Left Turn Legend. It's been over a month since my first video so I've made a lot of changes and additions. The gameplay hasn't changed too much, but I've made a lot of progress with the game's visuals. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. If you watched my last video, you probably noticed how much more stuff there is in the game now. As I mentioned last time, I'm going with a minimalist, low-poly art style with flat shading that shows off all of the triangles in my models. I've continued making my models with this in mind. Let's take a look at the grandstands, which I finished modeling and coloring. They're actually pretty detailed. All of the bench seats, floodlights, stairs, and railings are in full 3D. The front straight of the track has an extended seating area with a second level of seats, an enclosed VIP booth, and a press booth for media and commentators at the very top. On the main level of the grandstands, there are 45 rows of seats with a rough seating capacity of about 40,750 people. On the upper level of the front straight, there are 35 rows, giving an additional estimated 3,750 spots. This brings the grand total for outdoor seating, which excludes the media and VIP booths, to about 44,500 people. This makes my fictional raceway just a bit smaller than Sonoma Raceway in California, which seats up to 47,000 people. To create the grandstands, I did a bit of research into real-world NASCAR tracks and how their grandstands were laid out. The bench seating arrangements are similar to those of Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee, and the extended second layer of seating in the home straight was inspired by tracks such as Charlotte Motor Speedway in North Carolina. However, I didn't want to make this track an exact clone of any real-world track, so these components are still pretty different in-game from the elements that inspired them. Of course, the track is still a long way from finish. There's no safety netting like in real race tracks yet, and the infield is still completely empty. There's also no crowd in the stands yet, so the track isn't quite as alive as it will be when it's finished. I've also done a lot with the visual effects in the game. There are now sparks, smoke, and power-up effects that make things more aesthetically pleasing. All of the particle effects use Unity's built-in particle system. However, I've made many changes to get these effects to look and feel right for the rest of the game's art style. The sparks are very similar to those that I created for the Street King. Thin orange streaks that fly out whenever you hit something. However, to match the rest of Left Turn Legend's aesthetic, I decided to make it so that sparks are just a single solid color with no texture. For smoke, I decided to play around with some low poly shapes. I eventually settled on 3D modeling octahedrons, which are shapes made of 8 triangles, to use as my smoke particle shape. These work very well in game because they look like squares at a glance, but their tumbling and rotating movement gives them more character. The final effects I want to take a look at are the power-up effects. Whenever you collect a power-up, an explosion appears in that color. The explosion uses the same octahedrons I use for the smoke particles. For the metal power-up specifically, I created a transition effect for when it activates and when it wears off. Let's see how it looks. I really like the way the metal effect turned out. I wrote some custom shader code to get the transition to look exactly how I wanted. Let's take another look at how this works. During my first devlog, there was no sound in the game yet. I've since gone in and added audio for most of the important elements. Car engines, skidding sounds, crashes, and power-ups. I'll let you take a listen.
spent a lot of time discussing how art impacts the visuals of the game, but now I want to shift gears into talking about the role that code plays in this. In real life, when you look at something very bright, the light coming from it seems to bleed over to other objects. Notice how the light from this light bulb blurs and spills out around the bulb itself. In game development, this light bleed effect is known as bloom. Bloom can really enhance the visuals of a game. Take a look at how much shinier the metal car looks with bloom enabled. The bloom effect in Left Turn Legend is a custom effect that I originally wrote for the Street King and ported over to this project. While Unity has some built-in bloom effects, they were too complicated for mobile devices, so I ended up writing my own implementation that would run faster on phones and tablets. I won't directly go over the code I wrote for the bloom effects, but I'll show you how each step works conceptually. First, the game renders the scene as normal with no special effects applied. Now, a key part of Bloom is how blurred the light bleed looks. Accurately blurring images can be very expensive, especially for mobile devices, so I instead went with a very quick and dirty blurring method. We simply reduced the original image's resolution. This isn't the most accurate blur, but it is very fast. Our next step is to isolate the areas of the image that are very bright. We don't want our bloom effect to blur dark parts of our scene. The way this works takes advantage of how colors are represented in computers. Colors have three components, red, green, and blue. Each of these components ranges from 0 to 1, with 1 being the brightest and 0 being the darkest. If red, green, and blue are all 0, then we get black. If they're all 1, then we get white. We can change each component individually to get unique colors. Going back to our bloom effect, we can simply discard any colors on the screen that have a red, green, or blue component below a certain cutoff. The discarded parts are now left as black. At this point, we have a roughly blurred image that shows the brightest parts of our scene, but the blurring doesn't look too good since all we did was reduce the resolution of the original scene view. We'll now apply a quick and dirty blur to this by repeatedly offsetting our image by a small amount and averaging the resulting colors together. Now that that's done, there's only one step left, adding the original, unaltered image back in. Since the red, green, and blue components of colors are numbers from 0 to 1, we can directly add them to each other to get new color components. All of the dark areas in our blurred image got converted to black, which has red, green, and blue components of 0. This means that adding these parts back to the original won't change it at all, which is exactly what we want. The brighter areas, however, will be added and brighten up our original image, giving it the light bleed effect. This brings us to the end of my second devlog for Left Turn Legend. Please feel free to leave a comment if you have questions or want me to cover a specific part of the game in the next video. Also, if you remember from last video, there's a certain twist to the driving in this game. Comment below if you want to guess what that twist is. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in Devlog 3.